Moving on, we are going towards our last panel of the day, which will talk about fostering brand and PR agency relationships, the challenges of overcoming creative differences and crisis mitigation, how brands and agencies should take a joint stand in case campaigns face a public outlash. Now here we have a stellar panel once again, let me invite them on screen. We have Sunanda Rao, founder and CEO of Seraphim Communication, Suveer Paul, Executive Vice President Ruda Finn, Rahul Nag, Head of Communications Pocket FM, Saurav Das, Vice President Corporate Communication, Semcorp Energy Limited, and moderating this session is Shrabasti Malik from Exchange for Media. A very warm welcome to all our panelists. And Shrabasti, over to you. Yes, thank you, Kathy. Good afternoon, everyone. It is great to have you all in this session. Hi, good afternoon. Good. Hello. Yeah, can you hear us? Yes, clearly. Are we audible? Okay, right. Yeah, good afternoon, Shrabasti. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Shrabasti. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Rao. Good afternoon, Mr. Paul. So, uh, Welcome and thank you for joining me in this wonderful session that we have today that will talk about fostering brand and PR agency relationships. And uh, like we know that some of the most successful and beautiful campaigns come out of a joint collaboration between a brand and an agency when they uh, proactively collaborate with each other, ideate and then dole out a campaign. So in all of these myths, what do you think are the challenges that uh, a PR, a brand and a PR agency face during communication, you know, while discussing about the campaign uh, of a certain product or a service, what are the challenges and the uh, hurdles that both the PR agencies and uh, the brands come across, face, and then overcome? If I can start with Ms. Rao. Um, hi. So um, actually to, uh, I was just listening to the keynote speaker before and uh, the most important thing for me lies in trust and it starts actually, uh, you know, when you say it's an established relationship between a brand and a PR agency, this is one thing, but when and how do you come to that stage? Uh, there's a lot of process involved in actually choosing a, uh, the right agency for the brand and also vice versa. So um, starting also right from the pitching phase and getting to know each other and then, uh, you know, evolving that relationship is the first and foremost step, which is obviously based on a lot of credibility, hard work, research on the basis of, uh, you know, on the part of the agency, but also on the uh, level, at the level of the brand as well. Who am I choosing? Am I choosing the right partner? So you actually are walking hand in hand for even a short term or a long haul uh, campaign. So just to kind of start off this discussion, I think um, I, I would rely on my colleagues from the brand uh, part, part of it to give us some insights as well. And then I'll pitch in more. Okay. Uh, taking the cue from Ms. Rao, if we can move on to Mr. Das, if you'd like uh -huh. to weigh in. Yes, this is like the egg and chicken story, right? Who came up first, okay? So the challenge which you are referring to, whether it's who's to be blamed and who's not to be blamed and who's to take the credit and who's not to take the credit is probably as eternal as that. And I can tell you because I sat in both sides of the table, right? So uh, I do understand the pang that comes on the other side and I understand the pang that comes on this side. Also. So quickly jumping in, you know, and I think it, this has moved a little bit I mean, if that was the cheese somewhere, that cheese has moved. And in the last 24 months, I think that's the movement that has happened. So uh, we know pandemic has made a significant shift to our life, the way we things, see things. And that's not the breaking news. Uh, the, the good or the bad part is that, you know, we both realize, whether it's the agency or the brand realize, that we need to survive and thrive together. I think that realization has set in. And I think that's the whole ecosystem. It's not just us. I think the planet sees that, you know, it's not me and the rest, it's us now, right? So we, we are looking at, and this is an opportunity for us, you know, and what has also happened during this last 24, 28, whatever the months were, that, you know, brands have become ubiquitous because the customer is like, you know, 
we have to look at the customer and customer is right now all of mediums take the platforms take everything so the challenges which we had has multiply you know it's it's like increased many folds right so if i look at what is the challenge the challenge is about the dharma of coalition okay i know this is very relevant to <laughs> the dharma of coalition so uh, it, it, the agency and the brand cannot see it i mean cannot be sitting in in two poles i mean you have to come it's whether it's the in house team or with the external agency or the agency and the in house brand guys okay each brings its strengths and each comes with its weaknesses i mean the faster we are able to identify that the faster we are able to you know kind of realize each other's strength and build on the weaknesses i think that's going to help so three more things before i just wind up because otherwise rahul and suvir will just probably mold me down on this is like you know uh three things which matters okay for a brand and an agency relationship and three things which usually breaks agency and brand relationships are the campaign the narrative and finally the relationship which i think sunanda just mentioned about i'll touch it upon at the end of it right so the camp when it comes to the campaign we do fantastic campaigns i mean india is a is is a storehouse of creativity whether it's pr creativity whether it's advertising creativity we are uh, right we are and we are pushing the frontiers we are building up but i think one thing we have to keep in mind and that's for the young people the 30 and the 30s the leaders of tomorrow credibility be credible when you create campaigns ensure they are memorable and one more thing keep it simple just keep it simple too much convoluted smart campaigns don't work too much smart campaigns they just confuse people the next thing is that we have to and that that goes from both the sides you know that's where you can break the challenges either mm-hmm. if you're not doing that together if we are doing it together we'll we'll ensure that we we kind of look at it if we don't then we create a problem that's the narrative part of it you know we need to, when it comes to the narrative we need to be ready for the unexpected and when i say unexpected it is like you know okay there is a brief there is a draft but how nimble are we to adapt the faster we can do that the better and that can happen only when we when you have a strong core idea strong core proposition in place so i'll i'll stick to the word core okay that makes a lot of difference and finally the relationship okay uh, sunanda touched upon it and i know because i i was sitting on the other side many a moons ago and i had faced this from the client side you know when you pitch you make a fantastic uh, uh, pitch you have a proposition which can really blow the client off but then what happens agency is also a thin set of line of people after pitching the core team moves on to another pitch and the client is left with another set of team which literally can be a heart heart in the pain for the client you know that's the other part we need to look into have that balance i mean the expectation management is important for the client if you can do that you can live with a client for a lifetime you know and finally there is the new entry it's not new because that dilemma existed but now it's strong is that you know agencies tend to have competitor mandates also while there are chinese walls there are you know well guarded processes in place but we know we are human beings so that doubt once it creeps in it doesn't make the client comfortable i don't know how it's going to be addressed i'm sure people will be talking about it i'll pause here back to you shabasti thank you mr dad uh, taking from one point that you mentioned that expectation management needs to be uh, wholesome i would like to ask uh, mr paul on uh, bringing on harping on what uh, mr rao said that uh, choosing the right agency is very important for a brand but that also goes that, that's also the case for a pr agency that choosing the right brand and the right campaigns to pitch so mr paul if i would like uh, if you i could have your opinion on the same on choosing the right brand and uh, you know balancing the expectation management part of it sure shabasti thank you so much for having me and uh, and congratulations to all the winners today uh you know hopping on what uh, my fellow panelists have just spoken about uh when we go in and make and i'm totally from the agency side i've never worked on the client side and i don't intend to i enjoy the agency atmosphere uh so when we go in and make a pitch 
pitch to a particular client, it is obviously built on certain premise, a premise of a need or a want that is outlined by a client. It is very important for us who are on the client side, on the agency side at least, to understand what is the need for the brand and what are the wants that are being articulated. When you go building a campaign or, or you're going in for a pitch, it is about you know, giving them a, a, a sense of how, what's the thought process? How are you going to approach that problem solving that has been articulated uh, by the client? If you get that right, that's the first step of winning anything in, in, the, in the market space today, obviously. And I keep telling this to all the people that I work with, that trust is earned, it's not given. Somebody obviously puts a punt out to say yes, these guys get it. They can deliver on what they are saying. And then it's about actually delivering to that commitment that you have made, right? Now, ideas that come, and I always lay stress on this. Uh, and, and in today's world, it's all changed. You know, when I, started with, when I started in communication over 20 years back, it was a lot different. But today's world allows us to play with data science umpteen. You can cut, slice, you know, look at, look at various, uh, various uh, problem statements, look at various aspects through various lenses. If you can back good ideas with data, there is very little that can be led from an argumentative side or from a side to say that there could be a different opinion. Because if data points you in a particular direction, it requires you to kind of understand, contemplate, and then say, yes, whether this is a good idea or not. And that's what's most important. One is us as agency people understanding what is a good idea, how do we substantiate it, how do we sell it? And the other side who's sitting and receiving that also needs to understand and get whether this is the right way for the brand. And most times of not, people who spent enough time in that industry on the client side and having worked maybe long years in that particular field, they get it. So our ability to marry the two and then understand that, you know, there is an idea that is backed by data that commits, that, that makes a promise and that there is an execution plan or a commitment to deliver on that promise. I think if we get those aspects right, we shouldn't see any dissonance in, in, in a relationship between a client and an agency. It is a partnership at the end of the day. You choose to work with each other. And that's the commitment that you need to deliver on. Uh, thank you, Mr. Paul. Uh, Mr. Nag, if I could have your opinion on uh, on the subject. Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, thank you uh, for having me here. And uh, again, like congratulations to all the future heroes of the PR industry and the future leaders. Okay, coming back to the point and coming back to the panel, I think there are three aspects uh, uh, that we need to be a little, uh, a little careful of or caution of. Uh, one is uh, what uh, Saurav has already uh, mentioned, uh, expectation management. And if you look at it, expectations management doesn't happen from day one. It comes from uh, a continuous flow of trust and credibility that one builds over a period of time. And unless and until that trust and credibility comes into the picture, uh, there is always going to be an expectation mismatch. Point number two is uh, I have already always seen that there is some thin line or thick line between agency and brands when it comes to uh, the strategic focus in terms of driving any campaigns and vis-a-vis -vis the tactical part uh, which comes as a, as, a, as, a, as a byproduct of that campaign. Now, if you look at, if, if you look at a very, like, a, at any campaign, at that point of time, you will see that the brand or any of any of the, the corporate side of the of the conversation is coming more from a strategic approach and having a very strategic outlook to it. But unless and until the the, the other side, which is which I I generally call advisors or consultants, unless and until they get the strategic aspect of the campaign, it's very difficult to marry both the agency's aspect and the other uh, or advisor's aspect and uh, uh, on the opposite side, the brand's aspect. So it is really important uh, to have that marriage when it comes to having the strat strategic alliance or strategic amalgamation or alignment in terms of driving, the, driving any campaign or narrative. Second is how the tactical part is going to be aligned in, in, order, in, in, in order to the uh, 
the strategic outcome that you want to drive. The third point is, uh, and this is again, uh, again, a part of the second point, which is that whether the, the agency is actually considered themselves as an agency or as an advisor, because the moment they are behaving like an agency, because to be frank with you, I have a bit of uh, a kind of uh, apprehension about using the term agency for any any form of PR partner and I generally address my my, my PR partner or my my the my PR advisor always as partner so I don't call them agency so the the first and foremost thing is agency is comes more from a tactical perspective to get the job done and get so basically that's how the term was coined in the advertising and marketing domain come get a, get the job the job done get a percentage of the entire value and move move ahead but when it comes to public relations and the communications practice i think agency is no longer going to be relevant one has to come as an advisor one has to come as a consultant and be a partner to the journey rather than just focusing on getting the job done over to you sarvasti okay thank you mr nar that was really insightful and uh, coming back to the uh, point that you said that uh, the relationship between a brand and an agency develops over time and on the basis of trust and credibility. So while during the strengthening of the relationship and during uh, you know making and the promotion of campaigns, there should and there sometimes are creative differences because the clients uh, come with a set of ideas that they want to uh, you know put out to the audience. And the brands have a few ideas of their own that they want to amalgamate with the ideas of the brand. So do you think that these kind of creative differences uh, strengthen the bond or, uh, you know, uh, strains it? Uh, I would like to start with Ms. Rao. If I... Yeah, okay, great. So um, in, in that perspective, you know, it, what, what the other my co-panelists have said, it, it actually all boils down to uh, how well do you want to work with each other, right? Yes, there may be creative differences, but I wouldn't really call them differences. These are when you're brainstorming together on ideas, when you're actually coming up with creative ideas. One thing is obviously when we start uh, giving in some pitches, when it comes to creative ideation of campaigns, be it uh, a long-term or a short-term campaign, um, I think, of course, as a third party, when you are, I'm representing an agency. So as a third party, you are not from that system, which has the mission, which knows its brand, which knows its own personality, what it wants to portray. Uh, we as outsiders, of course, need to be a little more briefed and it, it evolves over a certain period of time. But on the other hand, what the third party perspective brings is fresh ideation, fresh creativity, as in out of the box thinking, which I myself as a brand probably have not even stepped into that realm because I am coming from inside out perspective. So these two things, when they marry, that all that will can work out if you have a basic understanding that you want to work with each other and chalk out that brilliant plan that both sides are working with each other for, right? So. At the end of the day, the goal is set that you have a campaign. The mission is set because you want to work together. I don't think really that, you know, at that point of time, that they are two different parties that are working. I think they, they, they do come together. We, we do so much of ideation. Um, the latest one, like we, we have actually helped uh, in a project that has been, it's a multicultural, multinational uh, project uh, just recently that we got over with for a client of ours. And, you know, in that whole thing, it's not just about feasibility or uh, either we are sitting across the table and just like, you know, flinging ideas across the table. It doesn't really work like that. We get the briefing. We do talk about feasibility as well. Is it feasible? There are so many things that probably a brand has limitations. They have shortcomings. They have uh, challenges that like, you know, for example, I as an agency can use shutter stock images, but then my clients will say, no, I cannot. 
but then that's where i'll have to see how feasible it is what are the assets that we have i'm just giving a very very tiny minute example of how actually a day to day functioning comes when you talk about creative uh, brainstorming for instance so those kind of issues can be solved as long as there is that mutual understanding and that's where it boils down to if we are friends if we want to have that basic fundament of working together if we have that credibility if we have that mutual tr trust if we have the honesty if we are hard working i think nothing can i don't see that as a problem sorry i got a little long on that uh thank you ms rao uh, for your input uh, mr das if i can move on to you and ask you about uh, mr rao just spoke about uh, you know feasibility about yeah, yeah. Uh, if the agency is able to meet the requirements of what the brand requires in terms of promoting uh, their services or their products mm -hmm. and if i could uh, like to if i could have your uh, view on this see uh, i think uh, shunanda's view I'll definitely uh, touch upon that before I go into it. I'll also uh, I kind of really resonated with two points, one uh, from Shubir and one from Rahul. Uh, Shubir's point, which he referred to that, you know, uh, need and want. Okay. And need, understanding the need of a client. And, and then probably I, I'll just slightly uh, give it my twist, uh, you know, align my want with it ensures that we build a trust. Uh, I, I have, and I'm coming from several successful uh, self experiences when I was sitting on the other side, trying to do that, right? It works, okay. And, and many a time, uh, you know, young, uh, talented uh, comms professionals sitting on both sides misses it. Uh, the faster and the better we understand that, probably that's the starting point. Because we need to realize one thing, big ideas are not IPs. They come from anywhere and from across the horizon. Okay. A big idea can come in from anywhere. So having a creative difference, I see it as a strength. You know, it, it, it's like, it, it's, it's the core of bringing it. But as long as, you know, it's healthy and, and the differences doesn't get, you know, translated into personal animosities, you know. So if those two can be met, I mean, kind of addressed, it's, it's, like, it's like a marriage, okay, uh, as, as, as uh, you know, uh, the reference was that, you know, uh, Rahul said that, you know, we are partners. And, and I think uh, there was a couple of times, even Vineet was mentioning in, the, in, in his previous address, that, you know, it's, it's good marriages last a lifetime bad ones ends in too many divorces and 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 we we know that from our human i mean our general social analogy itself right so if and and that whole whole thing starts with the trust i understand i make space i i try and give give myself that space to understand what my client needs and the client sitting in and tries and understand what the you know the agency wants to do there's, there's that whole bit of insecurity once it's kind of fades away that cloud, you know, that fog goes out. There's a great space for, you know, having creative differences, which can help. I think I'll stop in here, listen to others. Thank you, uh, Mr. Das. Uh, Mr. Paul, if I could have uh, an agency point of view on, on the subject. Yeah, sure. So what I'd like to say over here is the first tenet of teamwork, right? The first tenet of teamwork or partnership or whatever you want to call it is all successes and failures are collective. It's not a situation where you fail and then it becomes an agency and a client problem. The successes are celebrated equally, right? Okay. I mean, we're, we're joined in that. As long as we understand that about each other, I think there is great joy to be had in the working relationship. The other thing I just want to pick on, on is, you know, <clears throat> when, when coming into a room to kind of give out an idea or to kind of work with creative differences, it's not unhealthy. It's actually very healthy. I would propagate the fact that people are coming in with different opinions. Uh, they're coming in with, uh, with, with you know, well-researched ideation in terms of what they're trying to serve. Again, it's upon the leadership of that particular organization or the particular people over there to understand what will work and what won't. And the ability to say, yes, this is a great idea, and then take it and build on it. It may not be the entire idea. You can take it and you can build on it. And it, again, it's a collective effort from both sides. 
So I don't, I don't look upon creative differences actually being a negative in this particular discussion or, or, or have a negative connotation whatsoever. I think creative differences are extremely healthy. Uh, personally, I do believe multifaceted disciplinary you know, uh, resources lend to that uh, discussion. So it's great if you have, you know, five guys who've done public relations all their lives, but I'd love to involve people from advertising. I love to involve people from research. I love to involve people from different domains and each one comes with a different idea and they, and they approach the problem differently. So, I mean, on a whole, I completely welcome creative differences in a, in a room, obviously keep it healthy. And I think we're all well experienced enough to know what that means. Uh, but creative differences are what takes you to the next level. If everybody thinks alike, uh, you're just doing more of the same. Yeah. Where's the innovation? And that's where that's where I kind of put it out. You know, whenever working with young teams, you know, people who are eager to succeed, uh, give be be the be the guiding force, mentor them well. They'll come up with some fabulous ideas which are executable, which have been executed, and the results are there on the wall to see for anybody who's interested. So, you know, that's that's my take on this. I always welcome, uh, you know alternative thinking, uh, bringing in new concepts, new thoughts. This is it. This is the new world we live in. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Mr. Nag, uh, harping on what uh, Mr. Paul just said about creating different creative differences being healthy, as long as they come in from the right quarters and from various quarters, from advertising or from marketing, and about streamlining ideas uh, that are different, yet adhere to the same uh, output. So if I could have a brand uh, point of view on this, uh, sorry, you're on mute. Sorry, sorry. So I would probably agree with all the three other panelists over here. And uh, I do agree that uh, creative uh, differences is probably the foundation of any successful creative campaign. And unless and until you have that creative differences, you are probably sitting in a room with a lot of yes boss kind of people, which probably is not a healthy sign for any team. Uh, second is uh, whether this is coming from the right quarters. I don't think there is any right or wrong quarters when you are doing the brainstorm and doing uh, a discussion on certain creative ideation. It for I like I, I can give you for an example. I was I was actually doing a kind of a rehearse session for another panel a couple of weeks back, and someone from some other consulting firm actually gave me an idea. Which I which I really liked it, and I I actually started uh, rolling that idea in my in my organization. The, the, the point is, are you receptive enough to uh, hear out the ideation that is coming to your way, uh, be it from anyone, be it from people who, whom you may not like as well. But if there are ideas which are coming and which is actually adding to your strength, you should always welcome that and. That is probably, as I said, the foundation of any successful campaign. Uh, so just concluding it uh, by saying that unless and until you have creative differences, you'd have no creativity in the organization. Well, that was very uh, rightly put and very beautifully put, Mr. Nag. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next question of the session is uh, about standing up both brands and agencies taking a stand on their campaigns in the case of a backlash. More often than not, uh, some of the most beautiful campaigns have, uh, you know, faced a lot of backlash owing to either, uh, you know, some have addressed that it's specific to a minority or it's hurting the religion or some other issues that have cropped up. So how do you think, or do you think that brands and agencies should jointly take a stand on any campaign or any successful campaign, for that matter of fact, in the case of a backlash or in the case that, you know, it backfires. Uh, Ms. Ms. Rao, if I can start with you. Okay. The big answer is, if I'm in it, I'm in it. And it's, uh, I mean, I, I have a very... Or, you know, you know, I the brand to lose each other and say no, no, push the blame. I think that's a very childish thing to even expect. Um, I feel when we are doing the entire preparation for a campaign, we have to keep in mind that there is nothing. Even if you 
you know bring out a needle it will attract any sort of today the social media the world of social media is so dynamic uh we do have a lot of opinions around and there is no campaign that's not going to attract any negativity that's okay that one has to take in a stride notwithstanding that i think there is absolutely from my perspective i wouldn't even entertain such a question in my mind whether if in such an eventuality something like this comes i'm going to wash my hands off or the brand would watch it wash its hands off i don't think that's even a question when we are even signing our contracts um if there is other i'd love to hear the other opinions but i think we are all on the same page about that okay thank you mr rao uh, mr nag if i could uh, have your views on this should brands an agency jointly take a stand on uh, on a campaign in case of uh, a negative backlash rahul or me uh, mr nag yeah exactly oh, sorry okay uh, so one thing which i i i i'll probably uh, agree with sunanda over here and uh, one thing that i always follow is uh, together in prime partner in crime so if you are have having the celebration together with uh, with your advisor or pr advisor pr partner over here and if there is any kind of backlash or any form of crisis that happens due to a campaign you cannot leave them alone so it has to be like a, a a kind of hand in hand it has to go hand in hand and it's a kind of handshake uh, that uh, that we we both have agreed before we even started working together so mm-hmm. there is no question about it that uh, there is a single point of uh, uh, ownership that that would lie with the brand or with the with the with the pr partner it if it's mostly it has to go it has to be together celebrate the success or if it's if it is actually a crisis or backlash just face it and solve it but once the, once there is a backlash then you have a other task to do to to neutralize the backlash and neutralize the crisis rather than blaming each other so i don't think there is any scope to uh, take any form of ownership or take any uh, uh, like do any kind of blame game at that point of time and that's the neither a healthy sign of a relationship between the two parties okay i think we are coming at the fag end of the session so i'd like to quickly move on to the last uh, question is that a brand and agency relationship is more like a personal one like between friends or between families so how do you think that uh, this relationship can be strengthened or how can we make both sides you know communicate effectively for a more successful campaign or a successful relationship in the long run uh, i'd like to start with mr rao again <laughs> Uh, sorry um actually this uh, we have encompassed or we have comprehensively covered the various aspects during this short time that we could uh, the the only thing from my end that remains to be again talked about or even i'd like to answer mr das's comment uh, though it becomes should become a ping pong ball but yes you know and Uh, this question about how we are when brands are hiring campaigns uh, for the ca- agencies for the campaigns so yes there's a different team as you know it's it's we do understand that point and this point has been raised quite a number of times also on twitter uh, in fact even today there was there was this discussion about how um, when when times are looking for okay you're pitching in their uh, when they're giving out tenders or you know give give the right feedback so it's it's actually a two way street but i think the more important thing here is that when more that they to work together i feel that and on um, the critique of the larger pr industry in general i think one way out is to have those kind of niche work with niche agencies that are specializing in their field um, gone other days when i'm i don't want to take on gone the days when you would hire let's say a coca cola would hire the biggest pr agency in the world and you have that one tagline that it tastes different for example uh, now we have so many nuances to take care of every market has its different regional specific specificities even india 
as a market is very very complex every 100 kilometers we have a change of attitude so the campaigns also have to look into that aspect so you know probably when you're searching for an agency when you're searching for the right partners uh, probably it'll be a good thing to kind of understand how well how well and how well you are talking to that team partner and to have that obviously that frank conversation that look you know i'd like to meet the team in the first go when you guys are pitching for it so one way out is to be extremely transparent about things so i know it's very tough uh, on the other hand i think also to be more precise in the ask i have had so many campaigns or let's say meetings or first elevator pitches where clients do not even know the difference between a public relations agency or a marketing agency or a creative agency and then we have to write start from right from the scratch in explaining and what is paid media what is earned media what is you know uh, opinion generation so i think yes the pr space largely is a very abstract space it's not like you're seeing an ad it's not like you know it's a tangible asset that you can grab onto it's about changing or it's actually about perception management and reputation management so i think barring that i'm throwing all these big vocabulary words because from the industry i think all of us our audiences we know what we're talking about um when it comes to largely having a versatile i as an agency person will always look for versatility for diversity for you know having that creative mind um, a boiling pot of minds uh, in terms of you know having the different kinds of uh, it's not just about you know bringing together minds from the advertising space or the monitoring space i want to see creative from all the aspects i we want that are not just from the pr background also Uh, we are looking for bankers engineers fashion designers musicians uh, documentary filmmakers so i think uh, barring that the last point to come back to the question is how can we enhance to have an interest as well as you know inward outward dialogue with the and more the dialogue the better thank you for your views ms rao uh if i'd like to move on to mr das if i could have your views on this on the same on how uh, brands and agencies can you know can communicate more effectively and the opportunities that lie ahead for both the parties you know i'll i'll just take you back to a quote which kind of it, it's more of those you know your own baseline statement which you live by uh, and this is from david ogilvy in 1955 and he said that you know the customer and the consumer is not a moron she is your wife i'll just kindly slightly adapt that saying that he or she is your client okay uh remember that so uh what happens is uh many a times we we in in our zeal to kind of you know to kind of move on a build on and stuff like that we tend to miss out that little that little space that that's I, i'll i'll start there but then i'll also remind i'm um, because this group which we are talking today the, the forum is all about young leaders who are going to be taking our seats very soon and they're going to be the you know next flag bearers of, of the sector so you know remember you are a craftsman of one of the most ancient art form and when i say one of the most ancient art form is that influencing did not start with you know the industrial era it was there way back when the neanderthal man was running trying to bring down a mammoth you know they managed to influence their other fellow neanderthals to go back and you know chase one mammoth because there was something at the end of it so they started influencing and even after that homo sapiens when they realized that neanderthals were the you know apex predators they managed to get themselves together spin out something speak to each other communicate get together and and overcome the neanderthal and and since then we have been kind of you know influencing you know bringing down civilization building civilization we have been doing that right so so this is this is one of the most ancient art form we are dealing with okay so let's let's start there and you know and it all starts with two things trust we spoke about it many times today in the in the, in the course of it and the next thing is creativity you know are, these are two fundamental blocks of our relationship you know if you want to really build it start there with trust 
you have to be you have to be first of all transparent to your customer or your client or your partner let's let's put it partner to partner let's forget client and agencies out there for once you know you have to be kind of completely completely mutually start respecting each other trust each other you know just just let yourself you, there are times when you will fall but let the other person know that you're falling you don't have to hide that you start there you give a little space the other one will also right start there and and the next thing is you know the best friend of brands is creativity the more creative the practitioner is the brand becomes stronger so any brand custodian loves to whether it's sitting on both sides love to have something creative around that you know and the worst and the worst enemy of a brand is replication often young professionals pick up a formula successful formula from one brand one client and just plugs it just uses google tool to you and replace the names and puts a pitch together don't do that again i'll go back to that you know the customer or the client on the other side is not more on it's it's you know so uh, these two few things so i'm talking of transparency i'm talking of trust i'm talking of you know the encouragement of having creative space if we have these fundamentals in place these three pillars i'm sure any of this whether you talk about brand agency relationship whether you call about agency i mean this communication team are coming both together and a stakeholder relationship they can all flourish and they can all be you know growing mutually and growing better i'm done speaking back to you you're on mute thank you mr das that was really quite insightful that what you mentioned about you know trust and transparency being the bedrock of relationship between a brand and an agency uh um uh, mr paul if i could uh, weigh in on your opinion from an agency point of view yeah so first of all i have a little bit of a differing <coughs> opinion on this as far as you know relationships go it's very different with my family and it's very different with my client my family is unconditional my client is conditional so you must be able to separate these two uh second is any new relationship is like two rough stones taken and grinding together so they are going to be you know instances where things either you know mindsets don't match or expectation mismanagement etc they don't match but over a period of time if you can keep rubbing those stones together they become smooth right yeah. they rub the friction out so what that essentially leads to is about intent if the intent is right from the agency side each and every time that they put their you know foot forward if the intent is right you are going to get this relationship right the one thing that i can't teach people is skill but i uh, one thing i can't teach people is will the intent i can teach people skill but i can't teach people will that has to come from within so no matter where you are in the hierarchy of an agency whether you're right on top or whether you're right at the bottom remember the will needs to be paramount the skill will come they you will find good mentors within the so called bandwidth of the agency i'm sure there will be people who will come up put their hands up and and help you uh, but there's nobody who can help you with will will is something that you need to generate for yourself and you need to put yourself with the best intent day in day out uh, working for the best uh, uh, you know for the best for a, for a client in terms of serving their needs thank you mr paul uh, mr nag if i could have your uh... closing comments on on this uh, subject so uh, probably i won't be having those uh, 20000 kind of fit ever kind of thought process over here or perspective over here but i'll keep it very grounded uh, something that i follow uh, i always try to um, ensure that uh, there is no uh, form of fear or scare or any form of gap which can cause a communication gap with my partner Uh, so anyone right from the bottom of the line to the top of the line can call me at any point of time so that is the kind of confidence and comfort that i i always try to give to the other side because once that comes then uh, follows the trust and uh, credibility the trust of uh, the the fact that they are trusting me about a, about a point that look at things are not working or we need to look at a alternate route or things are falling down there is a popa that has happened unless and until you have that fear out of the con complete conversation uh, that will never happen so that's uh, that's one trust and second is respect so irrespective of whether like they are a 
pressure to the organization or of the senior most person in the team at the end of the time at the end of the day uh, unless and until you do uh, respect your team uh, you will not get that respect back as a, as a, as, a, as an outcome of it now unless and until that mutual respect falls into the picture i don't think there is there will be enough trust and transparency into into the conversation so it's all inter- interconnected and interlinked but i think these are the three uh, uh, characteristics uh, characteristics behavior we need to be we need to be a little focused on transparency trust and respect uh, thank you mr nag for the in- insightful uh, insight uh, i think we've come to the end of the session it was really interesting and it was a lot of informative a uh, session that we had today thank you to all my panelists mr paul thank mr das mr nag and mr rao and i think uh, the budding professionals of tomorrow are going to gain a lot of uh, inspiration insight and uh, innovative ideas from this session i know personally i have so thank you so much and have a nice day Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank and you. all the best to the winners and um, greetings from our side. Thank Correct. you so much, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations to the entire team, all the winners, and and to Exchange for Media team also for organizing this. Thank you, everybody. It was Thank a pleasure. Thank you, everybody.